Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is a vlog. It's going to be a little different today. The sun was right in our face in this shot, so that's David, my friend and uh, personal trainer. He trains a bunch of guys, or a few guys on the PGA Tour and a bunch of women on the LPGA Tour here in Long Beach, California. This is El Dorado Park Golf Course. So the sun was in our eyes, so I'm doing this face on view, which is kind of rare, actually. So today is going to be a little bit of golf me playing and then a little bit of recap of be better golf and how things have gone all right so i hit that one really solid just blocked it to the right just a little bit which is actually um if you can hit it far enough which is past the bunker on the right hand side it's a really good angle and spot to be that's the be better golf head cover if you go to rockin lnm it's in the description you can get a be better golf head cover they're uh, really unique Native American head covers that my friend Olin and his family make out on a uh, Navajo reservation in Chinle, Arizona. All right, so here is, I'm trying to hit a fade in a kind of interesting way to hit a fade that I heard Rory McIlroy talk about. So we're gonna have Rory McIlroy tell us how to do that in a second. Rory McIlroy videos really helped me out, shaping ones. Cause he's like, if you shut the face, you'll swing more you'll naturally swing like basically he says if you change the face your body will react to that your swing will react to where you put the face in your setup it's true for me to hit a fade i actually i'm cl I, i'm closing the club face i'm trying to close the club face down because that encourages me to swing further left and yeah. the more left your path is the more it'll encourage a left or right shot so for me to hit the fade, if I even, so I can, I can do it like this and, and really swing left, but if I try to just close that club face in a little bit and feel like I swing left, um, it should produce a, a little oh, fade. Oh, hold up fade, beautiful, yeah. yeah. So, it just, because I know if I don't, if I don't swing left with where that club is, mm. it's just, go, it's just gonna go straight, it's mm. gonna go straight left or it's gonna be a big draw, so it encourages me to almost exaggerate that feeling of swinging left. Yeah. Yeah, so just like other things work in the golf swing, you got to think of it kind of backwards. You got to think of your body reacting to what the club face is doing rather than doing something with your body and hoping that the club will react to that. Okay, so that was a really good wedge swing that it bounced, the green was kind of firm, it was very cold this morning, it bounced pin high and then rolled out to this spot. But it had a little bit of a, of a do mark there from somebody else, so I thought I had read this pretty good, but quite bumpy. So ran that out, so I'll have that left for par. And there's par. So par, par and even after the first hole, I think David made par as well. All right, so here is the second hole that I'm playing today. What's that sign say? 378, 376, something like that. This is with the iPhone 10. So I call it the iPhone X, I like that better. So this is with the iPhone X and uh, you can see how much clearer this is than even my expensive camera that I used to use a while ago. But not as clear as my new camera that you guys saw with the, the AJ Bonner, uh, Bonar in interviews I did. And a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be doing with Tony Lutzak in Florida, I'm going to be and Mike Bender in Florida, I'm going to be using the the fancy camera. 107, chilly, and a red flag. Yeah, 107. It's cold, and it's a red flag. Because uh, so, I want to hit this about just a, a, should have hit that a little bit more than normal. Really good wedge shot there. Just. Yeah. It was a little cold, so it just knocked it out of the air. But the the impact of it and everything was really good. Didn't jump forward at all. Here's David putting from off the green. Yeah, baby! Good. Chip in birdie for David. Very good. And then I really like these kind of putts from the fringe, so I really thought I was going to top them. And it was looking very good for a very long time. So... That's a part for me. So just like you can do overdo anything, this swing here was actually turned out to be really bad. So what I was trying to do was play a fade. So I had the face shut a little bit and I was gonna swing left a little bit, but I just had a major wobble at the top. So 
put a glancing blow on the ball and I went into the bunker, which I didn't know, but that, but that wasn't just a small mistake. That turned into a very, very bad mistake because the bunkers are um, very tough here as far as the... I hit that, what I thought would have been with a pretty good weight, but there's just a little bit of light sand on the top and then it is hard, that's what I'm looking at, it's hard packed at the bottom. So that's something that you would have had to have known beforehand. You would have had to hit that super light and it would have jumped out on its own anyway. All right, so that's me for par. Slow rolling a pass there. So that's a bogey, first bogey of the day. David made bogey as well too, I think. All right, so let's do a little flashback thing to near the start of the channel, maybe like four months into the channel, I'm not sure. Um, in November 2015, I played this hole when I was playing with Christo for My Swing Evolution, and I hit it in the water left, and I used to hit it in that water left all the time. So if you listen to me here, Swing. Yeah, it was kind of a scared swing. So that was basically an anti-left swing because this is the swing I made a long time ago. So that's my swing from 2000, November 2015. So you see super long and sloppy. It's got a lot of power, but it's just the, the force vector of the power, I guess you would call it, is just directed all over the place. And this is not the world's greatest swing or anything, but, but you can see the power is, it's all much more in line with itself. And that was a little bit of a block right, not, not a, a very good swing, but that's, that's the huge difference when you know where your power's going a little bit, you can miss on the right side. So there, it's like I knew that I wanted to hit a little bit of a fade, and if it faded a little bit too much, I'd be fine. So that's the difference between hitting it in the water and hitting it in the right rough and just having a shot over this tree. So this is a nine iron. So you can see I kind of flipped at that to a little bit through impact to try to launch the ball up in the air, which I did. But the... Uh, really, I think, I don't know, the, the rough kind of de-lofted my face because it seemed to really jump out. Yeah, the, the rough grabbed the face, I think shut it down, and it just it squirted to the right a little bit, and it was a little lower. But it was about pin high, so this is a very difficult chip shot. Hard to tell, but I landed it right on the fringe, which killed it a little bit. And then uh, slow rolled out to just about, I think, a little less than three feet. So I was very happy with that. All right, here's David with a, a similar shot, a little bit better lie. I've been trying to get David to review the, uh, the short game scoring system thing. And he was supposed to come out with Tim and I. But he was busy, you know, when Tim was doing, came out here for to Long Beach for the short game school. Uh, Tim just emailed me. He wants to come back to Long Beach. So if you guys are interested, send me an email. Contact BeBetterGolf at gmail.com. We're going to do sometime, probably right after the Masters, we're going to do a uh, short game scoring school. I have a couple locations, but here, here in Southern California, probably not Long Beach, uh, probably at this country club that I know that would let us do it, and then and then there's a, a really fancy public course that would let us do it. All right, so here is short par four. So say, same thing, watch that swing. Now let's go back to 2015 and see my swing from, so just see the balance in that swing stuff, and then you see, see that swing there. So just, You just imagine the force and it's just spinning all over the place. It's just, it's very hard to imagine. I could, I hit the ball well when my timing was okay, but. And then here's uh, today. And you can just see it in the balance. Plus, a company back then was giving me free clothes and everything, but they were a Swedish company and the shirts were a little short. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. All right, this actually is not that great of a result, but that swing right there, that wedge swing is like, I'm. Re that's really exactly what I'm trying to do. I just didn't judge how far it was gonna go or the lie or something, so it, it did come up short. But the motion of that swing is what I'm trying to do. That was really well in balance. Not much wobble up the top, that's really what I'm trying to do. All right, this is an extremely tight lie. 
which would have been a, a straight up chunk before. But if I get the shaft up and down and I expose the bounce a little bit and swing super shallow, you guys will recognize all these things from what Tim says, Timmy Overton, then uh, sh you can hit much better quality shots more often. All right, so here's for par. Went over at the moment. Famous snack bar just passed us there. This course, I think, was built in 1965, and you still get a lot of that 60s vibe here. You see how old the trees are. Very rare for California to have such long, old trees. I'm letting this run a little bit because I want you guys to see the full routine, a full, super solid putting routine, because making a lot of putts is, is really about routine and attention span just as much as it is about technique. So I'm doing the same trust thing that you guys know about. One thing I will, I am working on is keeping a little bit more head, steady head through the strike. But, you know, it's a little bit of an early look, but great result there. Okay, so good par there. Here's David going into the tough 15th hole because it is pinched in with trees on the right, kind of like a bowling alley, I've always called it. David hit a... a a push draw that landed on the 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 rough on the the left rough but it had a draw swing on it and bounced out and actually he hit that very long so here um, really trying to hit a little bit of a fade it ended up doing exactly that just a little and here is back in 2000 in the end of 2015 and that was a really good swing. And that was the thing about my swing back that back then, because I was like a four handicap or something back then. But my anti-handicap back then was horrible, like if you took all my worst rounds. So I could, sh I could go out and shoot 75 on a given day or 74 on a given day, but I could just as easily shoot in the mid-80s back then. That was a better so that's, the, the, that's the, the major difference is I'm going to shoot lower now but I'm going to shoot lower much more often. So I don't really like to look back, you know, I don't, you guys haven't seen a lot of like before and afters of my swing or things like that because it, I'm living in, in this moment right now. So I'm, that is just a history lesson that's not that useful to me. But uh, I do think it's, a, it's fun anyway to see some differences. And the main difference, if you see I'm doing right there with my right arm, is just before is trying to swing it all with, you know, like they tell you, with the big muscles and everything. And here this is just hitting it really hard with my right arm, letting everything else follow that. Okay, so good backswing. Now that was a great drive. That was really good. I actually thought this had a chance to, all right, here's 2015. You just end uh, today. So it looks a lot more, I don't know. Jimmy Walker or something like that. Just a lot more balanced in the finish. And not only balanced in the finish, but through the transition, through impact, just everything. Just that the force is more directed. All right, so here is, I'm going to have a, a vlog that I shot the day after this, where I played a match against this guy, Ben, who challenged me. Uh, a fan of the channel and sent out a challenge to me. So I had the same exact shot the next morning. And that's just something you have to learn about actually playing golf. You know, there, the grooves were not going to come into play at all because of the lie. I should have landed that short of the green, and it would have rolled right up to the hole. Instead, I landed it short of the hole, but on the green, and it rolled all the way out to over 30 feet. And then I had a very tough lag putt, and making short putts in this hole for some reason is very hard. There, I did the... The Nicholas 86 thing where I blamed uh, the, the divot. Although Jack probably, uh, or Spike Mark, so although J Jack could not fix his, I could have fixed mine. So Anyway, um, made a bogey there, so I'm two over. And that is a, a well-balanced swing, really good. I actually, th that was an 8-iron from 160-some yards. I just don't have my 7-iron now because I lost my 7-iron, so I'm getting one back. But that was back then. This is today. I'm not going to harp on it too much, but just a, a lot more. A lot different. And that was like four or five months into Be Better Golf. That stuff, that's those swings from 2015. I just picked that because it was from this same course. 
Um, my swing had changed a lot, you know, working with Monty uh, and and some other people a lot in that four or five months. So I could, I guess I could put it up like right before I started the channel, which would have been March of 2015 or something. All right, so here's, uh, David wanted to do, or I guess I wanted to do a long drive contest. David, when he hits it well, is extremely long. He's got a lot of power from all the kettlebell things he does and all the workout stuff, things he does. So he wanted to do a long drive contest. Got that a little on the toe and didn't get all the power into the ball. And I'm swinging the driver pretty good right now. So when you're swinging the driver good, it feels like the harder you, the harder you swing, the straighter it'll go. And the more you try to like, you know, hit it gentle, the, the more it's just gonna, could go anywhere. So I was gonna try to hit this as hard as I possibly could. So we'll see how that goes. Sometimes that can be a real bad disaster. Pretty good takeaway, square to the path, watch the ball. And that just put a second gear onto it, mainly because I just hit it in the center. I hit it in the sweet spot, which has been probably my number one flaw these days is I just don't hit it in the sweet spot. So this from the same spot three years ago, it's a low toe hook. So that's about all. I'm not, I'm not going to do a big review on before and after 2015 till today, but I think the, the changes are, are pretty obvious. And, um, and I used to play a lot more golf back then. So, because that was either just, I think that was just as... I think my son was about to be born in July when I played that match. Girl. No, my my son my son was already born, but he was just just a little baby, my second son. So I was playing more golf back then than I am now. All right, David just hit the shot of the day. I, I did outdrive him as I was <laughs> talking about 2015. I I, I did outdrive him by uh, quite a bit, but he hit it. He hit like the shot of the of the last three years because he hit it from 216 yards or something to two feet. I had 185 yards, or actually David probably had 204 yards. I had 185 yards, hit it pin high. You guys saw that water short right, so that was just kind of like a safe play. I hit one of those shots where I was gonna play a fade and if it didn't fade, I'd be okay and, and be trying to get up and down. So same thing as I was doing in that other chip that, because this was also a tight lie. I'm trying to land it on the fringe and have it roll out to there. Really good, really happy with that, especially because I haven't really been practicing it very much at all, which is nobody's fault but mine, but for Eagle. Nice. Beautiful Eagle for David, great way to finish. He was loving it. Big eagle. All right, so uh, for to finish the day with a birdie on this part five. Have some exciting stuff coming up on the channel. I make this good. Have some exciting stuff coming up on the channel. The Be Better Golf Challenge series where I put two pros against each other. The opponents have been set. It's going to be super exciting. I'm announcing the opponents on in a video coming up so soon. The match is coming up at the end of March. And then the video uh, will be out soon after that on BeBetterGolf.net. So stay tuned for that. The Be Better Golf School in Orlando at the Mike Bender Golf Academy is now sold out. Um, I'm super, really excited for that. Really excited for the wedge contest that I'm going to be doing with Tony there and uh, working with you guys, the students. If you guys are interested in future golf schools, do contact BeBetterGolf at gmail.com. Uh, like I said, we're going to have one coming up in April with Tim Yelverton, the short game expert, uh, figure out his schedule. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Click the subscribe button. Um, really interested in your guys' comments. And see you later. Bye. Oh, the other thing. I got to do a big video about this. Past 30,000 subscribers. So exciting. Thank you so much. We're going to do a, a bigger video about that. But thank you. Very much, guys. Later. Bye.